Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Um, so got a couple of updates for you guys just at the beginning of the channel. If you guys are new viewers of the channel, um, I'll print a time on the screen where the video actually starts, but I got a couple of couple minutes of kind of announcements and things like that that are going on with the channel. Um, just for people that are longtime viewers of the channel. First off, I apologize. I have missed uh, kind of the normal every two day cadence of uploading videos. Uh, my wife's family has had uh, some family emergencies that called both uh, me and my wife to jump on planes and uh, be out of town and indisposed. And unfortunately it was pretty quick and I didn't have time to create thumbnails for any pre-uploaded content before I left and um, haven't had a chance to record anything new. So um, that being said, first off, I apologize. Uh, we're gonna try and get back to our every two day rhythm. Um, so I apologize for the four or five day lapse in content that you guys have been dealing with. Second, um, and even though I'm going to be trying to move back to the every two days, um, content upload that you guys are used to uh, my wife and i are closing on a house tomorrow we're moving next weekend so i'm gonna do my best to get everything scheduled out for you guys um, but there might be another little lapse in content coming out over the next two weeks or so as we are getting everything moved in everything settled um, in our new place uh, the new place though is going to be great for both you guys and for me because it means that i'm going to have a dedicated space to uh, potentially record which means i'll be able to be a little bit more selective of the content that i upload um, as far as lighter matches that I think are much more interesting and it'll also give me the bandwidth to do a little bit more of the longer casts and longer videos that I know you guys really, really enjoy um, from the channel. So lots of great things ahead. I really appreciate you guys for watching. Really appreciate you guys for uh, sticking with me. I love you guys. And we'll go ahead and get right into the content. Okay, guys. Hello and welcome back to the show. Today, we are going to be doing a replay review. I haven't done one of these in a really uh, long time. This is going to be a replay review. Um, on uh, this particular game with Deep Throat Goat. Fascinating name you have there, my friend. Um, so loaded into this game and uh, I'll go ahead and let it start playing but uh, in here in a second, but um, I wanted to take this game apart just because um, as I loaded into this game, I looked at the I looked at the scoreboard and the rating. And so as you can see, I'm 1156. This is actually my global rating. This isn't my uh, 1v1 rating. And so I've noticed like Supreme Scoreboard does a little bit of a weird thing where sometimes it'll display uh, global rating and sometimes it'll display um, 1v1 or ladder rating. So this is my global rating and then I'm up against Deep Throat Goat who is at 50 uh, ladder rating. From experience, usually at this time of night, right now I'm recording this, it's about eight o'clock at night for me. Um, at this time of night in Texas, which is where I am, there's usually a good number of people that are on. So I don't usually get matched against people that are um, like actually 50 rating on the ladder. Uh, this can happen. I will sometimes get matched against lower rated players whenever it gets to be uh, late at night. So if I'm playing at like midnight and I'm playing a ladder match, sometimes I'll get rat matched against somebody who is uh, much lower rating than me. Um, but usually at this time of night, it, it's not the case. And I actually went and looked and his global rating is um, about a thousand. So um, he does have a good number of games under his belt, obviously on the global side. And he actually talked to me about that during the game. So. Um, we kicked off the game. I wanted to look at his build order, see if I could help him out a little bit um, as far as getting getting better at the ladder because as I have played more Supreme Commander, custom games like 4v4s, 5v5s play fundamentally differently than uh, 1v1s do. Just entirely different. Like it's almost, I find it's like almost an entirely different game. Um, maybe it's just because I get super stressed out whenever I play team games. Um, and uh, maybe, yeah, I get super stressed out whenever I play team games because I feel like I'm letting my team down. Um, but uh, this one, so this guy uh, obviously has some, um, obviously has some experience with the game and wanted to help with his 1v1 build order. And um, we talked a little bit, he said it was cool if I did uh, this replay review, I, that was what that pause was for. He says that he's a little bit of a Navy specialist. Um, says he plays a good number, good amount of set and so, uh, we'll pause this right here. So uh, he's doing what I used to do, um, which is power, which is a T1 land factory, build your core mexes, um, and then send your first engineer off to the hydro. Um, except it doesn't look like he is uh, sending his commander to assist. It looks like his commander, I'm actually gonna flip to his viewpoint real quick. So his commander is actually running around and building these perimeter mexes instead of going and assisting this hydro power plant. Now there is a way to get this build working where there is a T1 land factory. You don't build any power generators. You go 
uh, all of your core mechs, um, and you don't build any T1 power generators, but the only way you can do this is if you send your commander to help and assist the Hydro. Otherwise, you are going to power stall so bad. Um, so right now, he's making engineers, and he barely has enough energy right now to complete the Hydro. The Hydro, I think, is either, it's either 750 or 850. Let's see if I can remember exactly how much it is. 800. So right smack in the middle of where I thought it was. So it's 800 total. He has 980 right now. He's continuing to build engineers. So at this point, it would be better if he paused. It would almost be better if he paused his land factory in the position that he's in and just finished building the uh, hydro power plant. So um, one thing that he's doing really well is it does look like he has uh, stop commands. Well, or he had stop command on this engineer. So he occasionally has stop commands. Builds air factory adjacent to the hydrocarbon power plant. Um, and it's possible he was distracted because we were kind of shooting the shit at the beginning of the game. But, and here comes the power stall. So here in a couple seconds, we'll see just how bad this ends up getting. He is reclaiming for trees, which is going to help out a lot. Well, a little bit. Actually, more than I thought it was going to. Okay, so now he's stopped. Now he's pulled another engineer. So this is just... I think inefficient build power usage, it could have been mitigated if he had just walked his commander to the power plant uh, to assist that. Instead, he's having to pull build power to uh, reclaim trees so that he can get his hydro up. Um, and then once, it, once he gets his hydro up, this is delayed. It's delayed, he's still running on next to no power except for reclaim. So um, not an ideal build order. And he even started upgrading a T1 mass extractor. So yeah, real early on that, that's, that's again, sign of uh, somebody who, so this is again, signs of somebody who plays custom games is super early upgrade of T1 mass extractors, just because in a custom game, you usually only have to focus on one lane. You don't have to focus on taking down the entire map. Um, and so whenever you have to deal with the entire map, you cannot upgrade mass extractors as early as you would normally. And so here we go, here's the power stall. And this really could have been mitigated by just keeping your commander here and building T1 power generators or moving your commander over here and helping with the hydro. Um, as a sidebar, one of the guys who comments on this, on my ladder videos, it's, his name is Aramachan, Armachan. I can't remember exactly what it, what it is, what his name is on YouTube, but he posts very insightful um, critiques of my ladder matches as far as like fine tuning, different things to edit. And he recommends keeping your commander inside of your base, building additional T1 power generators to mitigate power stalls like this. And um, I think that we're seeing that in action as far as uh, keeping these power stalls burned down because this commander is not building these mass extraction points really all that much faster than an engineer would be because he moves so slowly. Um, and it would have been just so much more efficient if he had built uh, power generators around this initial factory with his comm and then sent an engineer to capture these mass extraction points instead. Um, as a result, he is delayed on the T1 air factory, he even has that paused. Yeah, so I mean, just hugely power stalled um, at this point, running almost entirely off of reclaim. Um, and this is just, this was not good. He's, his mass to energy income is just, it's just absolutely bonkers. So anyway, let's go ahead and we'll click on the uh, observer. So we contrast this with, by the way, uh, our Amachan, if you're watching, dude, I tried your, uh, or dudette, I'm sorry, I'm not sure if you're a guy or a girl, but um, the uh, I, I took your advice here with keeping my commander in my base to build additional factories and T1 power generators. Um, really good <laughs> advice, uh, really helped me get uh, initial T1 transports out faster than uh, I normally would if I was uh, doing it off of engineers and set building it off of the hydro. Um, so thank you so much for uh, that tip. It was very helpful for me um, as far as hitting key timings, like expanding to these kind of side um, side extraction points. So kind of where we're at right now, um, his commander, as far as build power utilized, nowhere near as much as mine, just because mine has not moved from my base per a player much uh, much wiser than myself. Um, the other thing I'm noticing is, so he went almost entirely for tree reclaim um, and has left a ton of mass reclaim here. Not that it really matters because I guess he went for that super early T2 mechs, but you know, it's, it's again like 
balancing your economy in a different way instead of having it like um, just so treating energy like it's an unlimited resource. It's kind of easy to do that just because you can build power generators, but he needs to I think he needs to make a bigger commitment to solving his long-term energy crisis. I'm gonna channel my inner, and it sounds like what, Richard Nixon? If you're Richard Nixon says a long-term energy crisis at some sort, at some point in his, in his, in his uh, rather baby tenure as president. Um, so this is where first clash, so, I had sent the scout over. I realized he didn't have anywhere near as many units as I did, so I started going aggressive at this point. Um, so again, importance of scouting, getting early scouts out. Um, I have this expansion point. Transport is headed back to pick up another load of engineers to head down to that expansion point. So, um, you know, again, this is another thing that you could do, um, do bud, is be able to, you know, if you kept your comm in your, oh my God, you upgraded another T2 Max. Um, if you had kept your comm kind of in your base, uh, you would have been able to get a lot of power up. You would have been able to get this air factory up sooner. You would have had an air transport um, or some interceptors. You could have potentially denied my expansion. Uh, you could have scouted the expansions and known that they were happening, or you could have, um, you would have been able to uh, expand to them your, yourself um, instead of using engineers, which these guys are just not very fast. Okay, so here's kind of the, Here's kind of the, the last thing that I noticed um, that really popped out to me. Like this guy plays custom games and is, you know, pretty good at them. Like he's over, he's over 1000. So he's not, he's not bad at playing custom games, but again, he's playing, he's playing the middle here. Like he is, uh, he's playing the middle here. Like he is a, um, in a custom game where he does not have to worry about side lanes um, where your your teammates will help you and assist you so his commander is just pushing very far forward he has not scouted any of this massive units so this is where i just see his commander um right here and i think i just flipped immediately to uh snipe target priority on my comp um yeah so there i just flipped to target priority snipe because i had scouted i knew i had like three or four times as many units as he did from a production standpoint so I can let these units deal with his units and then just run him down basically with my commander and any shots, any extra shots that my Mantis get into his commander, like right now, it's just butter. It's just extra money. Um, so if we want to wrap this up. If we want to wrap this up, this is a, this is a really quick game, but if we want to wrap this up into two things that um, I think that uh, our boy here could have done a little bit better, it's, um, keeping his commander either in his base to build additional power or using his commander to build the hydro hydro power plant. Using your commander, like we talked about, to expand to these perimeter mexes is kind of an inefficient use of your commander's boost and build power um, because he still moves really slowly. So effective build power utilized across these five mexes that you use to expand is, um, is not ideal. Uh, second thing is playing this game like a... Uh, like a custom game where you send your commander, you know, out to the front um, with, you know, relative confidence that your allies both not only have your flanks, uh, but you'll also be able to deal with uh, the opponent's T1 spam. So that's another issue. And the last issue, and this is one that I struggle with as well, but scouting. Um, so I'll, I'm going to upload this game, I think, in conjunction with uh, another game um that i played actually in a first person perspective so i guess it'd be a first person ladder pov but we're scouting really um won the game for me uh, because it is so important and i know it's one of those like really nagging things that um, professional players talk about but scouting is so important it can literally win games for you and so if you had scouted and realized that i had this many units here in the middle i feel pretty confident that you wouldn't have tried to wrap your commander into this uh, more precarious position further forward. But anyway, um, I will stop. Uh, I'll go ahead and cut the video there. Um, I hope you guys learned something. I know I definitely do. Anytime I take a step back and take a look at these videos um, and these recordings, I need to do more of these, especially uh, replay reviews reflecting on my own replays where um, I end up getting destroyed. Um, but anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.